Well, after five years of traveling the US with our family in our RV, we're gonna talk today about how for the first time ever, we were actually turned away from a campground. And I am pretty shocked as to the reasons why that this particular campground refused to let me make a reservation. Let me just tell you that I have easily made hundreds of reservations at RV campgrounds over the last five years. And I have never had this particular situation happen. I do our travel planning about six months or so in advance. So right now is the time of year when I've been looking at our travel plans for the spring and for the summer. And there's a campground that we were made aware of. How we found out about this campground is a super important part of the story. And I'm gonna share more on that in just a few minutes because <laughs> that's just part of what makes this whole situation even more bizarre. Anyway, this particular campground is located over in the Tampa Bay area of Florida. And in doing some research, I did find out that this campground is located away just five minutes, literally, from a family member's house in the Tampa area. And one thing that we like to do is visit family during our travels when we can. So I had a gap in our travel plans. I could fill that with a visit to this particular area right around the time of our son's upcoming 14th birthday. So it was the perfect opportunity, at least I thought, to celebrate his birthday with some family, spend some time with them, have a little birthday party. And so now here is where the story starts to get a little crazy. And that is a crazy lady. So we mostly stay at Thousand Trails campgrounds to so just keep our costs down. And there are several thousand trails campgrounds in the Tampa area that we could choose from and that we've stayed at in the past. But this particular campground reached out to us via email and they asked us if we would like to come and stay at one of their campgrounds. Now, they have two campgrounds, one in the Tampa area and one in the villages of Florida area. So when I went online and I saw this particular campground was five minutes away from one of our family members, it actually seemed like a great opportunity. So I responded to their email with dates that we could come stay and here's the kicker, I received back the following email. So I'm gonna read this just because I don't want to misread or misquote any of it. The person says, hi Charity, nice to hear from you. Your dates for April or May will work for us. Let me know your preference. Please provide me with the year, make, model, and length of your RV, also your vehicle information so I can make a reservation for you. I noticed from your photo that you are a family of four. Do you travel with any pets? Please let me know so I can include that information. My staff at Campground Name will reserve a site for you and email a reservation confirmation for your preferred dates. Is this the best email address for you? Please also provide which address and phone number to use for your reservation. So, so far, everything is going pretty standard, standard response. So I replied with the following. Our RV is a 2004 Fleetwood Discovery motorhome and it's 40 feet long. We also have a tow vehicle, which is a Ford Expedition. We travel with our dog, Alaska, who is a great Pyrenees. Now I always include this information because some RV campgrounds do have breed or size restrictions. So I wanna make sure that they understand what kind of dog Alaska is. And our two cats who do not leave the inside of the RV. Now, here's where I wanted to stop and say something about the cats. There's a lot of times when we camp at campgrounds that I don't really include the cats because they don't leave the RV. Like they literally don't leave the inside of the RV. It's one of those things that, I don't know. You have to tell me, if you travel with cats, do you include the cats in your pet count? Do you not? Like I'm really including the pets that are going to leave the RV and be using the campground facilities, not anything that stays in the RV. So you'll have to let me know your thoughts on that in the description. So I continue and let her know our best email address to send any correspondence and the campground confirmation, our phone number, and then ask for the dates in April that I would prefer to book for. Now here is where things started to go south and you won't believe the reply I got. But before I get to that, I do wanna take a minute to share about our video sponsor, RV, because when I use RV to book for campgrounds, well, I don't have any of these issues. <laughs> now RV is a time saver when you're looking for campgrounds because you can literally save hours of time by instantly checking real-time availability across 10 of the top campground booking platforms. That's over 500,000 campsites and 4,000 RV parks to search and compare 
in a fraction of the time that it used to take. And when a campsite is available, I can book with just one click and RV then uses my profile to complete the reservation and send our confirmation within minutes. One of my favorite ways to use RV is to find and book these near impossible campsite cancellations at some of the greatest parks in America. I've personally scored reservations due to cancellations at several highly popular state parks during peak seasons. But probably the best thing about how RV is so versatile for so many different types of campers and camping trips is that our followers have shared so many stories about how they RV'd their campsite in a variety of situations from last minute cancellations to trips for next week, next month, or even next year. RV members always have the peace of mind in knowing that RV is always looking and booking for them nonstop 24 seven, 365. You can give RV a try for free at gratefulglamper.com forward slash RV. And if you decide you wanna get started with using RV to make those reservations, we've partnered with RV for an exclusive 10% discount off any of the membership options. The details are all in the description below. And a huge thanks to RV for sponsoring this video. Now, after I sent that email with the information and details requested by the campground manager, I received the following reply. Hi, Charity. Thank you for the information. We do have a two pet rule at our resorts. Unfortunately, even though your cats do not leave the RV, it is not fair for me to accommodate your reservation when we have turned others away. I hope you understand. I apologize this was not mentioned when we spoke with you regarding visiting our parts. This is where I feel like it gets crazy because I was very specific that our two cats don't even leave the RV. They're not outdoor cats, nor do we take our cats out for walks or, or anything like that. And so I was just trying to make sure that the campground knows our travel style. And if I didn't even mention that we had the cats, they probably would have never known. But I am assuming this whole time that they watched our channel because they reached out to us. So this whole situation was just very, very mind boggling. Now I want to remind you, we did not set out to make a reservation at this campground on our own. This campground reached out to us via our website to invite us to come stay. <laughs> And it's very obvious in all of our videos and our social media posts that we travel with pets. However, rules are the rules. So I replied with the following. Hello, insert the name of the campground manager. Now, why we prefer to not leave our cats behind when we are taking a shorter trip, we do have an option to have someone come check on them and hang out with them while we are away because we can leave them at the glamper hideaway if we absolutely have to. When we're gone for a week or longer, the cats usually come with us, but we do have that option. So at this point, I let them know that that was an option. We can leave the cats behind. So I replied, letting them know we could do that so that we can stay within the rules of their guidelines with the pets. So now at this point, I'm fully expecting a reply back, letting me know, okay, now we've complied with their requests regarding the pets and we can move forward with solidifying these plans and making the travel reservations. But no, 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 no. There's much, much more to come. So after this particular correspondence, this is now the reply that I get. Hi, Charity, I am embarrassed that puts the name of the person that originally emailed me, did not mention our park policies when she contacted you about visiting the resorts. She may not be aware that we also have a 15 year age restriction for RVs at, insert the name of the campground. Now, let me just pause here and say we have never ever not been allowed to stay at a campground due to our RV age. Now we've been requested to send a photo, we've been requested to verify that our RV is well maintained, things like that at some campgrounds that have had an RV age restriction. But seriously, this is the first time that we have ever been turned away, flat out turned away, due to our RV being nearly 20 years old. Now I have some more thoughts on this in just a few minutes, but the email goes on to say this. Because the resort is in a flood A zone for hurricane evacuation, this rule was established because the first time we had to evacuate, there were several older RVs that were unable to move. To minimize liability, the age restriction was established at campground name location in the villages. And our other resort is a 55 plus community, which more on that in a minute. I sincerely apologize for the miscommunication. Your family looks lovely and I'm certain your RV is well maintained. It is difficult for me to make exceptions and maintain park policies. Wishing you and your family 
happy holidays. Now here's where I find the situation completely absurd. If their reasoning is RVs need to be able to move in the event of an evacuation, pretty sure that the RV that I drove in four days earlier should be able to drive out just fine. <laughs> also, why not say this in the original email reply about the number of pets? I mean, I provided our RV like year, but while the back and forth, it was like this RV park was looking for reasons not to let us stay there. And that is after they reached out and invited us. We didn't go like looking to make a reservation there on our own. Like I didn't even know that they existed till they reached out and invited us to come check out one of their campgrounds, which this is why it's also laughable because let me tell you what the actual original email invite actually said. It said, hi, I am, first name, a marketing representative for RV Park. In a new 55 plus older community in Summerfield, Florida, I'm reaching out because we would love to collaborate with you. We're looking for talented creators like you both to help us gain more visitors. We would love to be included in your YouTube content and return for a stay at one of our parks. And they go on to name the actual parks. Now, here is where I was just laughing. And when I got this email in, I, I told Ben and it was just absolutely hilarious because here's the deal. If they're looking for talented creators like ourselves, I assume that they had visited our page, they had watched our channel, and right on the homepage of our channel shows Ben, myself, our two kids, our RV, the whole nine yards. So if you have a 55 plus park, do you want to invite a family of four to come stay and then make a video about it? I'm just, you know, help me out here. Somebody leave a comment. Tell me why that this even happened, really, because I'm still completely boggled at this point. So now here is where I feel like this whole other thing of the RV age rule thing is just slightly discriminatory. And you're gonna have to let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree, but here's my take on it. Number one, a brand new RV, depending upon the RV type, but if you're a travel family and you need a larger RV to accommodate your family, brand new, that RV is probably gonna cost anywhere from $80,000 maybe on the cheaper side, up to a million dollars for a new class A diesel pusher. So. After spending thousands of dollars, we're expected to rinse and repeat this process every 10 to 15 years. And you have to remember that at this point, after 10 years, the average RV has depreciated 50 to 60%. Do you see where I'm going here? <laughs> Those that can afford to lose hundreds of thousands of dollars per year can stay at these age-restricted RV campgrounds, but those of us that are fairly normal middle-class American or those of us who want to maybe be more financially wise, to have margin to invest, to prioritize experiences over things, are discriminated against? I mean, just, am I the only one that's seeing this? <laughs> now I get the flip side, I really do. Just like this person mentioned in her email about RVs being able to move in the event of a disaster, I will say, and you can leave some comments below if you wanna let me know that You've seen some of this at campgrounds you've stayed at, but some RV parks definitely have RVs there that probably haven't moved in decades. <laughs> but that would be just a different situation altogether, a whole different video. So at what point do campgrounds have so much business that they turn people away who don't fit in their neat little box of one pet, brand new RV, no kids? Evidently, the time is now. So it'll be interesting to see how in the coming years with more campground options becoming available and the rise of boondocking, which we're loving, at what point will some of these campgrounds maybe be a little bit more flexible with the rules and consider things on an actual case-by-case -case basis versus just a hard, fast set of rules when it comes to RV age or other factors? You have to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, this whole situation reminds me very much of another time when we encountered a campground who did not look at things on a case-by-case -case basis either. And I'm gonna leave a video all about that right up here. If we don't see you out on the road or around the campground, we'll catch you in the next video.